So uh, just kind of our agenda, we'll kind of have a, a welcome from the, the admin team. Uh, our counselor will kind of do some introductions as well as talk, talk about the scheduling process, which we know that your students have been kind of doing the past week or so. And then we'll have uh, a representative from each one of our departments sharing about um, their department and some of the opportunities, especially for freshmen coming in. So uh, I'm going to kick it off to uh, Ms. Cole, our school principal. All right. Welcome. It's so fun to have all of our future Mariner parents here this evening. Last year, about this time, we had so many people sitting in our auditorium. Um, and now here we are sitting in our homes. So um, no matter what, you're just as welcome. This was last year, if you can imagine, March of last year. <laughs> Um, we were welcoming our freshman class in. So we're so excited to have all of you. We're excited to kind of work through some new and exciting um, challenges and also opportunities that this year has afforded to us. Um, but we're so glad that you're here. Welcome to Sea Home. Welcome to our family. And um, you're, we're excited to have you here from our staff this evening. So thanks for joining us. And um, I'm Mike Kudo. I am one of the assistant principals at Seahome High School. And I work with uh, families with the last name A through K around variety of services and supports, whether it is um, IEPs and 504s, but uh, just navigating the system, um, kind of a point person connected to the admin team, as well as um, I do interact with, with students around discipline and behavior support as well. So um, that's me. And then uh, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, my compatriot, Bethany Bear. Hi there. It's great um, to know that you're all out there, even though we can't see you. Um, we're very excited to have your student at Seahome next year. This, um, this is my second year at Seahome, so next year will be my third. And I take the last half of the alphabet L through Z. So if your student's last name is L through Z, then all the things that um, Mike Kudo just mentioned around supports for 504s, IEPs, um, family outreach, and then student um, concerns around discipline, attendance, but also um, just the joy of connecting with your students. Um, I get the specific privilege of students L through Z, but we all love to connect with all of our students and often um, step in for each other. So I'm delighted to get to know you. If I don't already, if you don't already have a student at C Home, I'm, I'm excited to get to know you and your family next year. And I think I'll hand it off to Kim. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Kim Kirk, and uh, I am the Dean of Students at Sea Home. I also teach um, social studies, uh, a mixture of, of many different of our social studies from our electives to US history and AP US history, uh, as well as leadership. Um, and just kind of like what Mike and Bethany said, I, uh, I get to support students through the alphabet A through Z. So uh, I, I get to support all of our students. Um, and definitely around um, helping our students with attendance and helping them um, navigate school and really excited to welcome all of you um, to see home. Great, um, let's just kind of jump to our next slide, which um, when thinking of kind of school overall in general, some of the structure that, that we have and um, is school starting at 8.30, ending at 3.15. Um, some of the pieces that we do have eight classes each semester, um, and typically that's broken in an A, B um, day, so, or every other day kind of sequence. And it's a, it's a two semesters uh, per year. I wanna jump in for the next segment. Oh, I was giving our interpreter a little time to catch up with us too. Um, <laughs> a little breath. So as of right now, 
things can always change, but right now 30 credits are going to be needed for graduation. Um, those things can change based on our legislature, but for right now, 30 credits are what's going to be needed for this class in order to graduate. Each class that a student takes, they get a half of a credit for that semester. So for a year long class of like English 101 first semester and English 101 second semester, they'll end up getting one full credit. Perfect. Great. Ah. Okay. Let's kind of jump in. So these are some kind of basic things when when kind of starting out at at C Home. Um, so one thing we do have a uh, kind of a, a expectation that all freshmen stay on campus at all times. Um, so one, it helps students or staff to get to know students as well as um, kind of building relationship. And, and it's a, a structure as far as kind of keeping them safe. Uh, and it's, it's kind of our, our, it's our norm as far as, far as our expectation. Um, our parking lot, five miles per hour. Now that includes adults as well as students. So when your students start driving, I know you maybe haven't thought about that experience yet, but it's coming uh, potentially. So get ready, uh, but uh, please you know, be slow in that, in that parking lot. Um, Bethany, do you wanna talk about parent pickup and just kind of our parking lot? I'd love to. So our, if you've been to our building before, you know that the parent parking, the parent drop-off is um, a strip all along that's closest to the building all along the parking lot, the area where students um, and staff and visitors park. So when you drive your student in, you'll drive all the way up to the front of the building and it pulls you around um, the edge of the parking lot and you can drop your student off. Right now, if you were to do that, you would notice little green spacing dots that are along the sidewalk. Um, showing students what six feet looks like. Um, one confusing thing that's been happening just over the last year is with the, the ability we have to use the bus loop because buses haven't been coming. People have been pulling into the bus loop and parking and dropping students off. That is not available at all. So that bus loop is just reserved for buses. So if you find yourself accidentally pulling in there, just whip right around and pull in to the next parking lot where you'll notice all of the cars are parked and you can pull right up to the front and drop off your student. Um, we do want you, if you do have, if there is cars behind you, we ask you to pull up um, as far as you can to drop your student off so we can get that happening in an efficient manner. Um, all of our building, all of our entrances are closed except for our main entrance. Um, currently in the, in the morning only, our, some of our other entrances are open, but if your student arrives after the start of the school day, the main entrance is the entrance where students will enter the building. Um, let's see, bus loop. Um, if I'll just go ahead and finish the rest of the slide. So if your student is absent, if you've been in our district, you know that you need to call um, and have your, absent, your child's absence excused within 48 hours. Um, and just, we ask if you need to pick your child up, just give us a call so we can make sure that they are ready for you and we can send for them. Okay, this is where I get to jump in. Uh, my name's Mr. Smith, uh, Jeff Smith. And I get to work with these fine people. Um, I'm the ninth grade school counselor. So I get to work with um, all ninth graders for the whole year and help them transition to high school. And I love it, it's, it's great. Um, students then will graduate from me. Um, and then I never talk to them again, just joking. Um, we do, I do continue to know kids and, and spend time with them, but their official counselor, they move on to. And Amy Jelt has the beginning of the alphabet, Hannah Schutz has the middle, and John Vandermolen has the last part of the alphabet. 
So me for one year and then their alpha counselor for the remaining three until they graduate. Next slide, please. All right, so the transition. Um, as, as their ninth grade counselor and as counselors in general, um, we want to support students through advising about um, classes and, and school and careers and, and support them kind of as well. Um, they get a lot of scheduling support. Um, we do a high school and beyond plan with students in their tech literacy class. This class, all ninth graders take, and uh, they have an opportunity at that time to be planning and thinking about their future. And they start their high school and beyond plan in that ninth grade year. And then they continue to do different activities all four years until they graduate. Um, we meet with kids in lots of different ways. We see them in the halls, we see them in class. We have individual appointments with them. We have parent meetings, sometimes um, initiated by parents, sometimes by teachers, uh, sometimes by us. Um, we have uh, teacher-student meetings and uh, oftentimes can, can help you know, facilitate conversations between teachers and students. Um, we are advocates for students and we want to uh, support them and help them in their academic and personal growth. Um, we also have the benefit of uh, Megan Lever, who is a prevention and intervention specialist. And uh, she calls herself a counselor, um, usually, and, uh, and she is, and she's wonderful, and kids connect with her for all kinds of different reasons. And um, she is available to them as well. So um, you'll have an opportunity to meet her next year. All right, so you may have noticed that we have this scheduling thing happening. And there's a bit of a buzz, I'm sure in your household as students are thinking about uh, transitioning into high school. What classes are they gonna take? It's, it's very exciting. And I've been answering many, many emails and phone calls and having a great time um, with this process. Um, so this is kind of how it works. Let me give you the big picture so that you understand the process. Basically what we're doing is we are collecting data. We are collecting scheduling requests from students, it's the classes that they intend and hope to take next year, plus their alternates, okay? Now you may have noticed that the deadline and that's pretty soft is tomorrow because tomorrow we'll be meeting with your students one at a time in Zoom, going over their schedules together. And that is intended to be um, a checkoff meeting, not a you know start from scratch and create a schedule meeting. So um, as much po as possible, we want students to be prepared. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we give you a tour of the website here. And then, so on March 10th, that's the Bellingham School District student meetings. And then on March 11th is the outside of district student meetings, okay? Um, so once we collect all this data from your students and our current 9th, 10th and 11th graders, we create a master schedule. And basically the master schedule is based you know, a lot on what kids tell us that they wanna take. An example of that might be uh, intro to culinary arts. If we have a whole bunch of students wanting to take intro to culinary arts, then um, actually it's called nutrition and wellness for ninth graders, um, that's the first class, then we would offer a number of sections of that. If all of a sudden no one wanted to take nutrition and wellness, um, that class is gonna have a, we're gonna have a hard time filling that, okay? Now kids cannot vote math and social studies and English and science off of the island. They have to take those classes. 
Um, but as they get older, they have lots of choices that they can make within those departments. And um, you'll get a taste of that in a little bit here, okay? Um, so once we've gathered all that data, we've created a master schedule of, of teachers and where they're gonna teach and what period they're gonna teach. Then we have this amazing computer that puts all of the students neatly into those classes and it's done, okay? There's a little bit of cleanup that we do, you know, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And then kids will have their schedules available at the orientation that happens toward the end of August. So Mr. Kuda is going to uh, take us to the website now and I wanna show you a couple things that are important and maybe kind of simplify this for you. So Mike, if you can go to counseling at the top there. Yep, there we go. When you get here, you'll, you'll see our pictures again, of course. And then you have the, the, you want to click on incoming freshman registration, class of 2025. And then you're going to get this fine screen that will give you a whole bunch of different options. The one that I want you to think about most is the grade nine class of 2025 step two um, worksheet. Can you click on that, Mike? And your student will have what we really, really, really want for tomorrow or Thursday is that students have filled in this worksheet. Everybody's gonna take English, everybody's gonna take math, and that is placed automatically based on uh, teacher recommendation. Everybody takes biology, everybody takes tech, tech lit, and everybody takes health. So all that they need to fill in is their social studies elective, which we recommend that they take in the ninth grade year. They need to fill in um, another elective. They could do world language to start with. That's why we kind of put it there as a suggestion. They don't have to ninth grade year. Uh, students need two years of a world language to graduate. And then they fill in the rest with electives that they want to take. Someone might take a year of engineering. Someone might take art one and then art two second semester. Someone might take drama. Someone might take theater tech. There's so many different options for them. And that's where we want um, their choice in, in those elective sections there, okay? So really they're just filling in periods five through eight. And then what is super important is that they give us good alternates. Okay, students try to kind of trick the game a little bit and they'll put um, the same class in the alternates that's in their primary requests above, thinking that that's gonna give them a better ch chance of actually getting that class and it really doesn't. What we want is entirely different classes. So an example of that would be if a student wants to take PE and let's say they wanna take yoga, we would like to know an alternate or two of different PE classes that they'd be willing to take. And that's the key word, willing to take um, if they don't get yoga, okay? And that's what's gonna go in those six alternate sections. Generally speaking, we don't need a second, an, an alternate for world language, but we do for any of the semester long elective classes, including the social studies elective. And you'll hear about those choices a little bit. So Mike, can we come out of there, please? So tomorrow we'll be meeting with students and you can see the breakdown. Your student will know because they're, they know from their homeroom teacher where they're supposed to go. And um, they will come and meet with us in Zoom and we will look at their schedules, primarily at that worksheet that they have created. Um, they can download it, save it to their desktop, and have that ready to go. Now, if students want and they're willing, putting this into Skyward is even better, okay? And if you scroll down a little bit, Mike, I can show where that is. Um, there's a nice video, SHS course list and videos. Um, 
that's actually not a video, but that's a list of all the CHUM classes and videos that all kids can access. So when they're there, they can click on a hyperlink and find out about Guitar One, for example, or Art One, or visual communications and so on. So this, these are the classes that are just offered at Seahome High School. So this is probably even more important for them to use than the catalog, because the catalog that we have is a district-wide catalog. And all the classes that are in there are not necessarily taught at Seahome High School. So these classes are taught at Seahome. And then Mike, if you can go back out of there again. And then I'm gonna show you a couple more things and then we'll be moving on. There's a big bold skyward directions there is very good. Um, there's a registration video right above that. Um, some very talented uh, counselors who did a little acting and created a video will walk you through how to sign up for classes in skyward. Um, so that's a really good how to video if your student wants to look at that. Okay. But again, for tomorrow, the, the key thing, the main thing that we want is that worksheet completed, saved to their desktop, and ready to go for that um, scheduling meeting when we meet with them, because we can add those to Skyward um, easily enough. Okay. So, Mike, let's move on to the next slide, if you don't mind. Okay. So academic supports at Seahome. We really want to support your students and, and help them be successful. I mean, that's the key. And a good, a successful ninth grade year makes a huge difference in how they do overall. Um, and their number one support is their teachers, okay? That is their go-to when they need support in particular classes. Um, our administrators are fantastic. Our counselors are great. We are there to support them and um, for lots of, in lots of different ways. The Student Learning Center is wonderful. It's an opportunity to get tutoring from either upperclassmen at Seahome High School or volunteers that volunteer from the community, some from Western Washington University. And then we have Mariner mentors and the mentors are upper class students from uh, 11th and 12th grade who volunteer their time to support ninth graders and get to know them and uh, be there for them, okay? And then finally, we have a class that we offer called Academic Workshop. Um, there was a time, not at, down at our school, that you would call this study hall, but it's much better than that. Uh, the teachers teach them academic skills and um, uh, study skills and organization skills so that they can be successful in their classes. Plus, they have time to study, okay? So I believe we are gonna hear now from our department chairs. Um, and I think our first department is fine arts. Wonderful, thank you. Hi, my name is Colleen King. I'm the art department chair. And I'm here to just share a little bit um, about you, about art classes that your freshman can take. So there are many, many options uh, that are open to ninth grade students, a few of which um, are art one, drawing, ceramics one, jewelry making, and unified art. So there's kind of a lot of different pathways. Um, no matter what media interest your student has, there's an art class that will suit it um, in the fine arts. I also think that this is an important uh, class to take as a freshman, as many of our students are just starting to develop new friendships. Um, art can be a really social class that can foster a sense of community and help help your students make some new friends when they're um, during this like difficult transition period of going into a much larger school. So yeah, if you have any questions about um, specific fine arts classes, feel free to contact me. Um, my name is Colleen King and yeah, I think we're moving on to maybe Kirsten Dowd for performing arts. Hi, I am Kirsten Dowd. Can I see the screen for per performing arts? Thank you. So these are the classes that are open to incoming freshmen. Um, drama one and drama two are each one semester. Um, so if you would like to take both, you would sign up for both one each semester. 
um, for band classes, symphonic band and jazz band. Um, symphonic band is like the concert band, but for ninth graders and then jazz band. Um, mixed choir is the choir class and they sometimes call that sound waves. Intermediate orchestra is the orchestra for kids that have been involved in orchestra in middle school and they would continue on that um, in high school. And then guitar one and two is each one semester as well. And that's for kids, um, guitar one is for kids that have never played the guitar or maybe played a little bit of guitar and um, learned from there. Again, like Colleen said about the art classes, music's a great way for kids to make um, friendships and get to know other kids. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me um, via email and I will get right back to you about any questions that you have about the performing arts. Thank you very much. Mr. Cree, are you available? Great. Realize that my, uh, you have to put on your, your video here to be a part of this organization. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Cree. I'm the Career and Technical Education Department Head and I'm the Engineering, Manufacturing or Robotics teacher at SEMA. And I have to tell you, it's a great time to be coming into SEMA High School. We have a lot to offer in Career and Technical Education. We have classes, programs, clubs, and competitive opportunities. When we rebuilt SEOM, we made a concerted effort to upgrade and expand our CTA facilities and programs. The result is a truly incredible uh, facility and, and everything that we have to offer you. Uh, it's kind of hard with the, uh, the amount of stuff that we have to, to, to show you to kind of give you an idea of what's going on, but I, I would like to give you a little bit of advice to students and parents, and that's to really take the time to explore all of the offerings. Okay, we're gonna kind of show you some of them here and kind of run through the list a little bit, but exploration is really the key to, to learning what the students like and they dislike. With all the offerings we have at CIOM, we can give students a look at many different careers, some of which they might not even know exist. We want students leaving CIOM excited about what they have chosen to do next. The more they know and understand about their opportunities, the better decisions that they will make. Now, as you, as you look at these slides, the, the thing that's, uh, that you wanna see is that there's exploratory classes. There's also programs. Like if you look at the one that's up here now, if you engineering technology advanced, manufacturing and manufacturing advanced, the beginning ones would be engineering and manufacturing and applied technology. Yeah, applied technology and engineering technology would be open to ninth graders. Robotics engineering is open to ninth graders. And uh, if you go back go back a couple slides, just look at some of the other areas that, that uh, there. Aerospace manufacturing is a program that uh, goes through Options High School. It's connected to, to industry through Boeing. Then if you look at theater technology and some of the, the video opportunities opportunities, video productions. These are things that we've added at a much higher level in the new building. Theater technology is amazing with all the things we can do there. Now, so as, as you're going through these, uh, these lists, there's like three slides of them here. Just uh, kind of take in the scope of what's available and then go to that page that Mr. Smooth put up that had the video parts on it there where the videos are that are looking at that uh, they can kind of fine tune it a little bit better as to what is involved. If you look at this slide here, so you could say that uh, computer programming would be exploratory, AP computer science would be much higher level. So you would, you could, uh, you could explore at one point, your book is a much bigger, a bigger op operation than just say some of the beginning classes. So we have a lot to offer. There's tons of things that uh, students can, can get involved in and Take some time to look at it, look at the videos that are available for all the different programs and let the students have, have a bunch of fun going through all the different things that we can offer at CEO in our new facility. Any questions, feel free to ask any of us. All right, thank you, Kevin. I'm also part of CTE. My name is Derek Hahn.
Oh dear, I think we lost Derek. <laughs> Is English on and once he pops back on, we can have him talk about traffic safety? Mike, if you're talking, I can't hear you. That was all my fault and I apologize to everyone. You just kicked him out? I, I sent him back to the attendees. I apologize. <laughs> wow. Took it away. Awesome, Derek, welcome. <laughs> All right, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Derek Hahn. I teach the traffic safety course, which is unique in that it's offered during the school day. It is a semester long course. It also gets paired with financial literacy um, as we go through both traffic safety information. Then we also go through, through some financial information of you know cost of ownership of cars and all the things that go along with it and it's funny to think that next year is going to be 2021 2022 and so if your student is turning 15 at any point in that year um, they could be eligible to take traffic safety as long as they're 15 by the start of the class which will have classes start each semester with that would be august uh or September 1st is our first day of school. Um, I think as long as they're born in the year 2006, um, they would be old enough to take traffic safety. And then second semester would start around February, which I think is if they, as long as they're born by 2007 of February, they'd be turning 15 in that month. And we have classes that start at different times too, not at the semester since uh, we pair it with traffic safety and financial literacy. We start every quarter because we share that. Um, if they're already 15 and a half, they can take the knowledge test to get their permit, or they can just wait until traffic safety class starts and they get their permit as part of the class. Mike, you're still muted. Thank you, Mr. Hahn. And we will now head over to Mr. Schroyer for England. Mr. Schroyer. Okay, well, um, maybe we'll come back to English. Uh, we'll now go to, who's next? Ms. Carpenter. Oh, no, no, hello? Oh, okay. All right, there we are, there we are, there you are. <laughs> okay, hold on, there we go. Oh, hello, I'm Scott Schroyer, the English department chair. Um, welcome. Uh, ninth grade, all students take 101. Tenth grade year, students take 201, and then there are variety courses for 11th and 12th. Students need four years of English. All right, could you switch the, um, okay. All right, so uh, these are some tips that uh, I'm gonna recommend for your, your students and for you as parents. And it might be pretty obvious, but sometimes freshmen maybe struggle with these a little bit. Attending class um, is really important, um, and that seems obvious, but um, our students that struggle the most often are the ones that are there the least. If your student is going to be late or absent, I would really encourage them to contact their teachers and, and advocate for what's going on. Um, second one, uh, cell phones, and this is going to be probably a challenge now that the kids have been at home, but um, putting cell phones away during class is probably an important thing. And then some things just for students in terms of their conduct and, and actions, being open, honest, and curious, um, being willing to share their thoughts and feelings and ideas. And one of the ones that is a soft skill that uh, students really need to work on is that ability to advocate for themselves. One of the things that uh, teachers really like is when students are willing to share if they're struggling. Oftentimes we don't know. Um, and so if students are able to um, share what's going on, um, you're going to find that the teachers are probably going to be able to help them a little bit better than if they don't know. Um, number four, um, one of the things that a lot of students sort of focus on, and, and it's outcome oriented, is they want this idea of getting a 4.0. And in some ways, um, they kind of are missing the point here. Um, grades are kind of inflated as it is. I would say that uh, straight A's are kind of common now. And really, when, when teachers are writing recommendations and when, uh, when they're recommending students, they're more likely to be concerned with how did the student perform in class? How curious were they? Uh, did they participate? What was their attitude? Those sorts of things. 
Um, lastly, for your student was is to give themselves some great grace and self-compassion. Um, there's a lot of changes that they're going to go through um, next year and in the following years. And so they're not going to be perfect. And so if they're able to um, just deal with and, and accept the fact that, um, you know, they're going to they're going to hit some bumps and that's OK. Um, next. So for parents, um, just some advice for you. Um, again, your children's attendance really matters. Please help them get to school every day. Um, don't text or call your child during class. It's amazing how many times uh, uh, parents will do that. Um, and some things for you to do is you're at that point where you can start letting your kids maybe do a little bit of their own advocating and communicating with their teachers about missed work, uh, if they're struggling. Um, let them do that, the advocating and um, the communication. And then as hard as it may seem, allow your kids to make mistakes and take responsibility. Um, really that ability to kind of deal with that. Um, lots of parents, I think, uh, really sort of hover over their kids and it comes from a good place. And um, as a result, maybe in the long run, their kids maybe are delayed in terms of their development. And then um, give yourself as a parent some grace and self-compassion as well. Um, you're gonna you're gonna experience lots of things. I've had three kids go through see how my, my uh, I got a kid that's a senior there's so my last one and they're gonna change immensely. And some of it's gonna be good and some of it's gonna be uh, maybe not so good. So um, take the time to um, um, let your kid make those um, options and choices. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, but I would also say that once your kids are in the classes, if you do uh, have issues with specific teachers, just, just talk to them. I think that really is kind of a, the best way to do. All right, thanks for being here. All right, um, I think I'm up. Uh, Monique Carpenter, I am presenting as one of the co-department chairs for exceptional education. So I'm here to just talk about our inclusion model at Seahome. Uh, we are excited to welcome you in, all of our students at Seahome, regardless of ability level, are loved, accepted, valued, and respected for who they are. They belong at Seahome. They are one of us, they are a Mariner. So our service delivery model for students with disabilities in particular is one focused on inclusion. So we have two specific programs. One is a resource program that we typically use co-taught classes or skills classes. That is how we provide specially designed instruction for students who have IEPs. We also have some students who have more significant disabilities and their needs are a little more tailored to having some time outside of the gen ed environment. And so they may be enrolled in our life skills program. However, we really wanna stress and let you know, all students have access to high quality learning opportunities alongside their peers in the gen ed environment. And this is something we have been continuing to work on and strive through um, over the past couple of years. And we're seeing amazing gains for all of our students, students with disabilities and students without. And this is just an image of our unified basketball program, uh, really celebrating um, all schools and actually unified basketball between Bellingham and Seaholm. So it was a, a really fun event last year. One of one of the last events that we had, I think, uh, as as large schools. So um, really, really neat uh, in regards to that. But go to mathematics. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Angie Dessler, and I'm the department chair for math at Seaholm. Uh, registering for ninth grade math, luckily, is fairly straightforward. Most of our incoming ninth grade students will register for Algebra 1. And we intentionally keep our Algebra 1 class sizes smaller than all of our other math classes. We offer several co-taught sections of Algebra 1, which just means that students have access to more individualized instruction with two instructors in the class. And ultimately, our goal is to ensure that all students establish a really strong algebra foundation during their ninth grade year that's going to carry them forward into all of their future math classes. The most common two questions that I get from families, um, the first involves acceleration. So students who take algebra one during their ninth grade year and they want to accelerate in math have the opportunity to do that. Um, commonly, we have the kids double up and take geometry and algebra two at the same time during 10th grade. Uh, we recommend this option for kids that really enjoy math, 
math is their passion. They show some strong growth in algebra one during their ninth grade year. Um, and of course they have excellent study habits. So just keep that um, on the horizon and in your, in your mind um, for 10th grade. And we also recognize there are a few eighth grade students on track to complete algebra one by the end of this school year. Um, in that case, those students would just go ahead and register for geometry for coming in as ninth graders. Um, the second question that I get quite often is just how do I support um, my kid in learning high school math? And the number one thing that I would recommend is to model positive mindset messages about learning math. We believe at Seahome um, and we show students at Seahome that math is useful, math is doable, everyone can learn math at high levels. So reinforcing that message at home is really powerful. Uh, number two, Again, and I think this aligns with what you heard from Mr. Schroyer, just encouraging students to communicate with their teachers. Um, if something's not working, we have a group of really caring, devoted, experienced math teachers at Seahome. We're really, really lucky and fortunate that we have some good quality instructors and they work really, really hard. So if you need help, just reach out and ask. Um, and if you have any other questions about ninth grade math, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Angie Dessler. Thanks. Mr. Hoffman, are you available? I am. Hi there, Mariners. So in PE, in health, we'll talk about PE mostly here, but physical education, um, I'm speaking on behalf of our department head, Christy Van Agdam, but um, I was department for four years and, and uh, I've learned that the people we have in the department right now are uh, really good people, really caring people. I think it's a job where you really have to be nurturing, supportive, positive, and all the teachers in the program have that. It's really cool. So whatever class they take, your kid will be nurtured, they'll be supported, they'll be reinforced, and it'll be a good experience. Uh, the biggest thing in PE we try to do is develop a positive attitude in students towards physical activity, right? A lot of kids come in, they're video game guys, right? Like my boys, they love video games. So I got them on swim team, I'm trying to find ways out to you know, get them moving, right? But it's like, they come in and, and so many of them are sedentary often and stuff, especially in this pandemic. I mean, we're all in Zoom meetings, sitting on our seats and there's very little movement unless they have a P class or they have some kind of club or something got, got going, right? And, and um, it's the biggest thing. So positive activity towards physical activity is, positive attitude is the biggest thing. The, the second thing we try to do is we try to empower kids with physical skills that will lead to lifelong fitness. So if that's yoga or weight training, or racket sports, playing tennis or badminton, right? Whatever, whatever we offer, walking for fitness, hiking, all these things we do, we really try to, to nourish that, that, that desire to want to do it. We really try to reinforce kids to want to do it and teach them the skills so that they can, when they graduate, continue to be healthy adults. It's so important in today's society. I mean, we all know it's, it's huge. So that's the biggest thing I want to get across to all you Mariner parents is that we're there to support your kids. We're there to nurse them. We're there to reinforce them. We're there to teach them specific skills that will enable them to stay healthy the rest of their life. And uh, by the way, in yoga, if you guys want to come to my after school class when it gets running again, it's totally free. And your kid, if they show up with you, gets bonus points for spreading the health, spreading the, the, the wisdom throughout the public. So uh, that's something to think about It'll be once a week. Teachers normally come, but uh, you guys are all welcome. All of you, all of you, however many parents are, are welcome. We'll pack you in eventually down the road. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the courses real quick. So I'm taking a lot of time here. Yoga, um, we play some recreational games to build cooperative skills and stuff, but it's, it's a good chunk of its yoga. We have the kids ultimately teach the, kid, the other kids in the class a, uh, a sequence of yoga they build themselves. It's like a culminating project. If they can teach it, they, they know it. It establishes a level of mastery in my mind. And that's a big thing there. Team sports, badminton, tennis, volleyball, pickleball, ultimate frisbee, you learn skills, how to throw frisbees forward and backwards, pickleball to handle racket, volleyball to spike, bump, set, block, all that stuff. Tennis, same thing, badminton. So you'll learn a lot of sports skills. Hopefully it will empower kids the rest of their lives. They'll feel confident when they go to a court or they go to a gym or to a field and they can play those games, right? And they can be successful. So racket sports is a lot like that. International Games is kind of a unique course. Uh, we do archery, 
which is really cool. It's games from around the world. It's really cool, though. We play lacrosse, which is the Canadian national game. We play floor hockey. We play, like, bocce ball. It's a really unique course because you're going high intensity playing, like, floor hockey and lacrosse and stuff like that. And then it's suddenly, like, drink in hand, throwing a bocce ball, you know, lemonade in hand, throwing a bocce ball, or moki, throwing a stick, knocking down other sticks. And it's, it's from – they're from India and different parts of the world, right? So these games are really – um, diverse in terms of the curriculum. It's really cool that way. And weight training, uh, we do high intensity interval training. So it's more like a, it's more like circuit training, right? You do one workout, you move to the next, the next. And um, it's it's more like I uh, get your heart rate up, burn off cows, get strong, but really um, get toned as well. That way it's more focused on that. Power lifting is more like the Olympic lifts, the, the deadlift, the, power, the parallel squat, the bench press, the power clean, the four biggies, right? Those ones are going to build big muscle mass. Those are good for like football players, for wrestlers, or people who just want to get stronger, want to get bigger, faster, stronger. The Bigger, Faster, Stronger program was around at CLM for years. Uh, former teacher Gary Hatch championed it for like 30 years, and we won a lot of state champions with it, built a lot of great athletes. So that's something that goes on in powerlifting. Dance, really unique. Swing, salsa, hip-hop, line dancing, all kinds of stuff, social and folk. That's really cool. It's it's That's another lifelong fitness skill, right? If you learn to dance, boy, at a wedding or wherever else, a party, you can you can meet people, you can interact with people, you can explore new avenues, right? It's a great connection piece. So it's phenomenal. It's great for your body as well. Dance is really awesome. So that's one that's really good that way. Walking and hiking, that's for kids often that are turned off of um, competitive sports and stuff like that. They want to just kind of do their own thing, kind of like yoga. Yoga is like a catching net as long as like uh, hiking and walking where they can kind of do their own thing and just walk and hike and get a good cardio workout and, and explore the outside. We have a great uh, campus next to Seelm Hill. It's all outdoor, all forested, super cool. So it's great that way. So we basically have created a curriculum here that meets a diverse amount of interests. Uh, it can fill a bunch of needs for kids that want to do different things. And right now we're kind of, we're, we're shut down somewhat, right? But uh, next year, hopefully all these activities will be fully going, full bore, full bore. So that's our goal. So that's where we're at there. And um, as far as how the classes run in every class, right now it's not a factor, but next year you'll, we'll expect kids to dress down, wear proper PE attire. They'll have lockers, I'm assuming. They'll have places to store their attire. They'll wash it once a week, shorts, sweats, warm-ups, yoga pants, whatever they're going to wear. And that's what they'll wear in class because we don't want them to sit in class after that or ride the bus home and be all kind of, uh, you know, stinky and stuff. So I think I'm getting my cue to stop talking here. I think so. Okay. All right. Hey, God bless. It wasn't you, Eric. It was just the poor interpreter trying to keep up with you and your excitement for PE. <laughs> Sorry, I get jacked Do you need to drink of water. Hold on a second. <laughs> you did awesome, Eric. We love your enthusiasm. Thanks. I, I love what I do. I really love what I do. So it shows. Thanks. All right. Maybe I'm up. Uh, wake up, everybody. Look, I've got a cute rabbit. Cute rabbit. Look at the cute rabbit. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, my name's Carter Maiden. I'm not actually a rabbit, but my daughter said I should have her little bunny here in the class. Um, so um welcome uh i am carter maiden science department chair and i think everything on this uh slide you're looking at is kind of repeating what scott schroyer said for how to be successful um there's a little bit that the biology teachers wanted me to say about skyward if they have a, a little star symbol in skyward that doesn't really mean that they're missing something maybe they just haven't gotten it graded yet so but the bottom point I think is the most important for science, promote student independence and self-advocacy. And if you have concerns, get in touch with biology teachers. Um, all of us science teachers are here to help. And I kind of, I feel like, you know, we only have four more years. As many of you know, I have an eighth grader coming into Sea Home as well. We really just have four more years with these kids. And uh, if, if they're going to experience failure in a safe place, this is the place to do it before they're out of the house. So, um, all right, maybe we could move on to the next slide. Uh, science, three credits before you graduate. Everybody's taking biology. Whoa, that was a little too fast. Um, so really the big message from the science department is take a biology class, take a chemistry class, take a physics class. And there's your three credits. You have a whole 
bunch of other cool science classes you can take. Um, but next year, take biology. Uh, and don't hesitate to contact me or the biology teacher if you have any other questions. Thanks for sticking out this long. Hello, hi, I'm Kevin Ryan. I'm the um, department chair for social studies uh, here at Seahome. It's, and I'm also the head cross country coach and the head track coach. Um, go forward a slide. Um, the class I get the most questions on is AP Human Geography. I've taught this class at Sea Home the last five years. We have a ton of fun. It's open to all freshmen. It's a very attainable um, AP class for freshmen. Typically about a third of the freshmen at Sea Home take it and we do really well on the AP test. Um, it, um, it doesn't affect your grade, but um, we're, we're, we're happy with our success there. It, that number kind of takes away some of the intimidation factor um, for the students. Um, the pace is slower than a lot of AP classes. We read a chapter about every two weeks. And so that's 30 to 35 pages. So a couple pages a night. So if kids keep up, it, it isn't overwhelming. Right? And again, I listed some of the information we, just, we go over at the bottom of the slide, lots of super relevant stuff um, for kids this age and their future lives. So I think it's just an incredible class and we any questions on it feel free to email me there typically are and i can send out additional information we'll go forward a slide um, our department when we went to eight periods we created a whole bunch of um, classes to fit that new schedule one semester what we call no homework classes that's if you attend if you utilize your time and they're meant to be interesting classes the kids want um, to be there for, they're looking, um, looking forward to being in class that day, but when they walk away, um, they don't have to think about it till they come back because they have all their other core classes to keep track of. Criminology is one of those. We wanna go forward a slide there. It's typically a lot of freshmen take this class. It's an introduction to criminology. We keep it interesting. We look at case studies, we watch some videos, um, not as extensive or vocab oriented as a criminology 101 in college. Um, you get some of the idea there. Just try to keep it really interesting topics for the kids, grab their attention and give them some basic information about the discipline. Um, another one there, if we go forward a slide, is history of sports in America. This was to trick kids into learning a little bit about their country. Um, it is not how was baseball invented um, or how was football invented. What we do is we take sports and use them as the vessel to talk about a lot of big issues in our country like civil rights, women's rights, um, the Cold War, um, um, Vietnam War, et cetera. And you see some examples there on the slide. Really successful class kids typically have quite a bit of fun there. One more slide forward. World War II through film and lit. Um, we don't just watch the big explosion movies. We try to use film to cover many aspects of the war, European and the Pacific, along with um, the resistance movements, um, pre-war issues, post-war issues, the Holocaust. Um, super interesting, super interesting um, class. So we, again, again, it's great. Kids can come in, see the films, be interested, and then um, be excited to come back, but not have to, um, to worry about it. Um, during the evening. We'll go forward another slide. Two more. Um, ethnic studies um, is a brand new class um, this year. We had great success with it, spent a lot of time last summer developing it and really relevant to the current issues of the day. Um, great success this year with three classes of it. Um, hope to have a lot more next year. And again, really just a fabulous experience kids have had with our, um, our teacher, Dana Patterson. Patterson is that class this year. So. And then world geography was the other one that popped up there. Just uh, more physical geography and doesn't have the pace of AP geography and talks about, um, again, world, interesting world issues that um, catch the kids' attention. So we go forward a couple slides to sociology. I'll be quick here. It's a light homework class. Um, just, um, and, um, and then um, go back one more real quick. Sociology, light homework class. See the basics there. Pretty interesting. It will have homework, maybe about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes a night. And then the two psychology courses are both year long um, classes, super interesting. Uh, maybe one or two freshmen a year take AP, most take the year long um, regular but psychology one. Um, it will have homework though, expect maybe 20 plus minutes a night um, of homework for that class. Again, questions, feel free to email me. Um, email was on the slide there. And we also posted some videos to the registration site.
Thanks, Mr. Ryan. Next up is Ms. Hooker with World Languages. Good evening, I hope you can hear me. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Hooker. I'm the department rep for World Languages. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. Um, students need a world two credits or two years of a world language for a graduation requirement. And we have currently have three options at Seahome High School, uh, French, ASL, American Sign Language, and Spanish. And all three of the languages offer four levels um, up through AP French and AP Spanish, um, ASL4. And we also have a, a higher level elective called Latin American Culture through Film and Media. Um, and that class is conducted in Spanish. It's for students who've already taken third, third year and the class is conducted in Spanish and uh, we do some literature and it's sort of almost like a humanities course in Spanish. Um, and so that's a great course for some heritage speakers if they're interested in, in using their language and, and studying different, uh, Latin, different Spanish speaking cultures. Um, so it's a really good course. Uh, so as I said, we have a two year graduation requirement and um, but a lot of competitive colleges around the country really like to see at least three years of a world language. So we encourage students, plus we really like students to end up having some fluency and proficiency in the language. And, and that's really important to have, try to have three years or more. Uh, we also partner up with Everett Community College to offer college and high school. And students can earn up to 15 credits in high school and they don't have to do any outside work or extra work. It's just doing the work in our Spanish or level three and AP courses, and they can get college credit for that. I think my son between that and AP, the AP exam ended up with 12 credits of college Spanish when he got to college. So it's a really good way to, to get ahead in college, especially if your, your child is thinking about majoring or minoring in a language. Uh, we, in our four by eight schedule, which, which we've had for a few years, there are a lot of opportunities to take two or more languages. We have many students each year who decide after two or three years of one language to start taking the next language. And so it's really fun to see them uh, grow and develop um, a passion for languages. So um, that's really exciting. Uh, we also offer clubs in each language, ASL club, French club, and there's uh, two Spanish clubs. One is the National Hispanic Honor Society and also the Club de Lectura, which is a club that partners up with Roosevelt Elementary School when we're in person. And our students go there and uh, read books with um, Spanish speaking elementary students once a week. And it's a really fun, fun club. Uh, also uh, the French teacher, Madame Morrison, offers a biannual trip to France and also has her students here host French students uh, for a couple of weeks. So that's really fun to have them be able to have the French students in their home and then go stay in their, um, their French friend's home uh, the next summer. Um, the, the trip for um, our Spanish program didn't end up going last year uh, because of COVID, um, but we had just planned our first exchange um, with our sister city, Punta Arenas, Chile. Um, and so each, but each year we've had in the past three to four Chilean students come and stay with families, see home families and, and be in our classes. And so we have a really nice exchange there too. So lots of fun opportunities there. Um, and then um, Mrs. Ms. Broadbent, the ASL teacher, uh, offers events in the deaf community. She encourages, encourages her students to go out in the community and experience uh, events um, in the deaf community. And that's really exciting as well. Uh, if you have any questions about what language should my students speak, uh, take or any other questions about what level they should be in if they've had some language before if they, or if you speak Spanish in your home, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'd be happy to answer, try to answer your question or direct you to one of the other teachers that, that might know the answer. So uh, we really look forward to having your student hopefully in a first level class next year. 
Mary, while you're here, do you mind talking a little bit about the bilingual teacher academy that we're hoping? Oh yes, I I was I I wish I had realized it wasn't with the CTE classes. Yes, we also are offering a new new or trying to offer a new course for next year that uh, Squalicum and Bellingham have had for a couple of years, and it's called a Bilingual Teacher Academy. And we are the course is trying to encourage um, stu diverse students of diverse cultures and languages and interests to um, explore becoming a teacher in the future. And um, sorry, I'm speaking off the cuff, so I'm probably leaving some things out, but, um, and the, the course involves uh, learning about teaching as a profession and pedagogy and teaching practices and, and students do practice lessons with each other. And they observe classes in our school district outside of our building in the fall semester. And then, then in the spring semester, they do a practicum in an elementary or middle school. And so they work each day, instead of being on camp at our campus, they work with a teacher at a school and work with the students in that classroom and um, and learn, you know, how, how to be a teacher. And they even teach a lesson to the class. So uh, we are really hoping to uh, get this class going next year. And so we've been trying to promote it. And so if you have any older older children in your family who might be interested in that, and, you know, even if you're not planning on being a teacher, it's it's a good good way to know whether you want to work with children or, or, or teach, teach at a different level. So, so it is a really good opportunity. Thank you, Mary. Sorry to put you yeah. on the spot. No, it's okay. <laughs> I wanted to talk about it. So yeah, thanks. Well, that's it for our uh, kind of formal presentations from our department heads. And, um, and at this time, we do have uh, some different questions in the uh, Q and A section. So I will. Um, we can go ahead and just maybe start answering those. Um, and if anybody, uh, and if you have questions and you haven't posted them yet in the Q and A, please uh, feel free to do that. And I will also turn on the, the chat. So if you would like to send a question to the panelists, we can we can all do that. Mary, would you want to stay on as a panelist, or for right now, if something comes up? All right, Jeff, the first question here is, should or could parents attend the registration meeting with their students? What are your thoughts on that, Mr. Smith? Hmm. My original thought is that we're going to meet with 224 students tomorrow from the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, four counselors will be involved, so it's gonna be uh, pretty quick. Um, so yes, you could attend. Um, no, we won't have a long time to talk. Um, so I hope that answers your question. So if there's some follow-up that takes a little longer, maybe an additional meeting rather than this initial registration meeting, is that what you would recommend? That, that's what I would recommend or possibly following up with email and we can have a phone call to either way. Yeah. All right, let's see. We're going to put you in the hot seat again, Mr. Smith. Let's see if I'm you know, ready. can an incoming ninth grader audition for treble choir? Uh, there's a number of choirs that are often floated each year, treble choir being one of them. Um, if a student is, and by floating, I mean we offer the class, and if we get enough students, then, then we actually run the class. Um, and treble choir is one of them. And uh, typically ninth graders will take mixed choir and then they will audition into treble choir or concert choir. So, uh, so yes, they, if they're interested in treble choir, have them sign up for it. If we have enough students, then Mrs. Schlichting will get in touch for an audition. Perfect, you passed that one, good job. Thank you, thank you, it felt good. Okay, we're gonna keep coming at you. If we registered our incoming ninth grader, should we have already received our Skyward login information for the student? On the parent page in Skyward, it shows the incoming ninth grader's name, but information is not available. So students who um, are, are students outside of the Bellingham School District will not have a Skyward 
log in at this point. They will next year. Um, so, and I should have said this earlier, um, for uh, students outside the district who are coming from private schools and otherwise, um, please just come with the ninth grade worksheet completed and we will add it into Skyward from there. Uh, sorry for any confusion. All right, Ms. Barrett, you're up. Welcome to the hot seat. When will students be able to take the stamp test? Oh man, I wish I, I'm not gonna be able to pass this um, only because it hasn't oh. been scheduled. Well, I, it hasn't been scheduled yet, that's why. Okay. However, we are looking forward to offering the stamp test and the test that students take for other languages. Um, Can you explain what the stamp test is for those? I would love to. So if your student speaks another language um, other than English, it could be any language. We have tested students in just about any la every language you can imagine. Then, and your student reads, writes, listens, and speaks in that language. Those four language um, domains are really important then your student has the opportunity to test and get high school credit for those languages. There's a particular time um, during the school year and all of the Bellingham Public School students who are eligible um, take that test. The freshmen usually test in the fall, but because of the pandemic, the testing dates have changed a bit. So we're looking at the spring if you have questions about how to access that, it's free for Bellingham Public School students to take that test. And if you're interested, the right person to email is Amy Carter. So if there's, I'll, I'll put the, um, I'll put her email in the chat um, or not in the chat, but in the answer to this question. So you can see it in the Q and A, um, but she is coordinating that test and can give you all the specific answers about when it is and what language and how to access that, um, et cetera. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, Mr. Smith, is there a good place where people can find a list of all the available classes that um, fall under that college in the high school category? I do not believe that we have that posted at this point, but if you will email me that specific question, I will look into that tomorrow for you and I can send you that list. For freshmen right away though, it's tech literacy is one of them, right? Yes. Is it college in the, okay. So we'll we'll put together a list though and get that out maybe on the CHOME web, counseling website. We can do that, yeah. Awesome, thank you. All right, what about, are students able to take courses offered at other high schools? I can try to answer that. Um, it, yes, the, the answer is yes. Logistically, it's challenging. Um, and then there's a couple of things. One, usually ninth graders aren't doing that because of transportation. It's difficult to get uh, to the other schools to be able to take those classes. Also, there's a timing issue. Um, so if students decide to take classes at other high schools, they need to take usually two classes um, so that they can travel at lunch, take the class that they want, plus an additional class because they're not gonna have enough time to get back to see home to take another class, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, there's usually a, typically a 10 minute passing period uh, between our classes, so students would have to travel at lunch. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it's not a very common thing at freshman year. All right, Mr. Kudo, would you like to take the question? Did we lose him? Oh, this is open, open to anyone now. Oh, Mike, you're back, thank you. Yeah. What is the difference between academic workshop and AVID? So AVID is a, it's a, it stands for, oh gosh. Oh, Achievement it, via individual it's determination. Man, I'm, I'm doing great at this question. Oh man, the trivia, trivia. Uh, so the goal of AVID 
is is really to support a, a student that might not have kind of the structures in place to really gear them to be able to go on to a college level kind of post secondary education and the and the goal is to incrementally from freshman year all the way to senior year to build a student's skills and abilities to really build their their academic you know kind of muscles so that they can kind of challenge themselves as learners, learn how to ask questions, learn how to be an engaged learner, so that by the time they are walking across that graduation stage, they they feel confident that that they can step into a college course and and be successful there. Um, and it's it's often a, a really great space for a student that that might come from a family background like myself where I didn't have parents that went to college. Um, and so I didn't have someone that could speak kind of the language of the navigating of that and preparing for that. Um, so I think that's that's kind of the the goal and 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 it ends up being a cohort, uh, a group of students, you know, the the avid ninth grade group, you know, ideally continues to avid 10, avid 11 and 11, avid 12, and they're a community over time to build these skills together. Um, uh, and then I know there was another question, kind of what's the difference between academic workshop uh, between AVID. AVID is, is building those skills of being a strong learner, about note taking, about being an active learner, um, you know, time management, tools like that. Academic workshop might do kind of mini lessons occasionally about those things, but academic workshop is more just a space and a time embedded in the schedule for you to just kind of do schoolwork. Um, and maybe with the teacher kind of highlighting or kind of, you know, just checking in on your grades and making sure you're on top of things. But AVID is, is, is not just a study hall. So if, if that's what a student is looking for, AVID's not the right choice. But if you're looking for something that's really going to kind of build the skills for success kind of post high school, um, that's, that's really the goal of AVID. Nice. Thank you. Ms. Kirk. Welcome. Hello, Ms. Next Cole. up, can ninth graders run for ASB? And can you tell us a little bit about what ASB is? Yeah, so first to answer the first question, can ninth graders run for ASB? They can run um, for a class represent, re representative as a ninth grader as we are just getting ready to do our ASB executive elections um, to go in for next year. So those are open for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Those positions are um, probably ones that you've uh, been familiar with, president, vice president. Um, and then we have director of finance, we have the director of communication, and then we have our director of see home culture um, that students their sophomore, junior and senior year uh, can run for. But we'll uh, hold class um, rep um, nominations and, and, and meetings at the beginning of the school year uh, next fall. Um, and over the years, we've had uh, uh, four to eight freshmen that have uh, decided that they wanted to be a participant as a representative, and uh, we have, have taken the group on and allowed and have them be the representatives for their class. Um, what was the other part of your question, Ms. Cole? Just a little bit about what ASB is. I think yeah, you kind so, of answered that. Yeah, so ASB is a great opportunity for students to uh, be a part and, and help uh, be a leader within our school. Uh, we encourage students who want to do that role, I'll kind of plug the other class that I teach being leadership, that um, if that is something that your student wants to be a part of, of participating and, and being a leader within the building, um, participating in our larger school events, I would highly encourage, um, I love to get as many freshmen in leadership that we possibly can. Awesome, thank you. All right, Mr. Smith, we're back to you. We noticed there was a garage band listed. I think it's in the course catalog, but it did not show up for the C-Home list. Is that class not happening at C-Home next year? That, that class is not happening at C-Home next year. And I'm sorry, that's an example of a class that's in the catalog district-wide, but is not currently offered at C-Home. So, sorry. All right, we have other music opportunities though to get involved. All right, how will homeschool students know what math class they would need to be in? 
So typically, we will take your recommendation. Um, uh, we want to know what you feel like your son or daughter is, is prepared for. Um, typically, algebra, you know, is 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 grade level, and that's where students start. Um, if you have specific questions and you're wondering if your curriculum matches up with ours, then contacting Angie Dessler via email um, would would be wise. Hope that helps. Yes. All right, Mary Hooker, thanks for sticking around. We got a question for you. Can students test into Spanish too? And if so, how would they go about doing that? Uh, well, yes, I did. I realized I should talk about that on our slide and I'll edit that for next year. Um, there are, now that we don't really have a Spanish one at the middle schools anymore. However, if you're coming from a private school or outside of Bellingham, or maybe you've done coursework on your own or or you speak Spanish in the home, uh, you, a student may not go right into level one, they may go into a higher level. And what we typically do is meet with the student and uh, have a conversation with them in the language to get a feel, because you know, kind of using maybe the rubric for our level one and asking questions that those students should be able to answer at the end of the year. And then getting a writing sample, the same idea from the student um, and just to see where their level is. Um, it's not a formalized test, but we do use, you know, types of questions that you would typically have at the end of level one. And um, if the student seems ready for that, then they can go into Spanish two. I I'm not saying that they would get cr Spanish one credit, uh, depending on what they're, you know, if they had done a Spanish one class before, but they have gone into Spanish two before, or French two or, or whatever, second year language. Um, and then for the heritage speakers, we sort of do a similar thing. And we, you know, if you do speak Spanish in the home, even some and not 100%, um, a lot of times the first level Spanish is a little bit too easy uh, for the student and, and might be a better fit for in second year. So that's something that um, I'd be happy to talk to you about if you want to email me or call me um, and I can you know, we can discuss it and, and see where we can go from there. Awesome, thank you. All right, I'm gonna leave this one open to the field. Who has some advice that they would give to parents of our incoming Mariners who are feeling a little overwhelmed by the giant course catalog and all of the choices presented today? Um, how would you kind of go about making choices for selecting your classes? I, I would encourage your student to select classes based on kind of a balanced life. Um, and remember that they have eight classes um, and typically four of them are core classes and, and homework based. So what kind of activities are they involved with after school? What kind of free time do they have to get that homework done? And how much family time um, do they want to spend with you? How much time do they want to spend with their friends? All those questions um, are super important to ask. I would say in the ninth grade, less is more. Um, it is a challenging year to transition. Um, I think balancing challenging classes with no homework classes or lighter classes, uh, possibly a PE, academic workshop is a really good idea if they're concerned at all or overwhelmed about coming to see home. So hope that that helps. And if you wanna talk with me further about that, please call or email and we can get in touch. I would say something that makes them really excited to go to school. <laughs> so I would just have them read through and if something gets them really excited, even if you wonder if it's the right fit, I would have them try it. Um, even going through and having them read and highlight and then talk through. Um, I think anytime a freshman can get excited about being there, it goes a long way. So there's lots of great options and it's good to kind of explore a vast array and maybe take something that they have really don't know if they'll ever be interested in. It's free now. So try out lots of different things. Um, you never know who you're gonna meet in those different classes. Any other input? Okay. <laughs>
All right. We have a world language question, and I'm not sure if this one will go to Jeff or to Mary. Um, if a student took a world language class through BYU online, does that count towards the language requirement? Um, yes, it can count if it's a high school level course and you provide us with the transcript from that course, it can be added uh, to their C home transcript, but it has to be a high school level course. If it was a middle school level course, then you, it wouldn't count as credit, but it could count depending on the content um, as a prerequisite to get into the next level. And that I would really want you to run by Mary Hooker, our uh, department chair. All right, we have a question about clubs for incoming ninth graders and Mr. Cushman is going to be sending out some information about clubs and athletics and activities here shortly. Um, we're just gonna do that a little closer, closer to when we know what we can actually do next year. So um, that will be coming soon. Um, the question around advanced orchestra, I think right now I would just save that conversation for Mr. Smith tomorrow. Um, we'll see kind of where that ends up. But um, again, it's kind of a case by case basis depending on what the student has. Anything to add to that, Mr. Smith? Uh, no, you answered that very well. All right. So if someone hasn't gotten the link for the planning meeting tomorrow, what should they do? Uh, you can contact the middle school. Um, they have the information and they have sent it out uh, via Skyward. Um, and they may have sent it other ways as well. I'm not sure. Um, if you still don't have it, then email me and I will send you the link. All right, perfect. All right, then we have a couple of questions around our homeschool students transitioning to um, public education. Do you have any input on those or oh, any um, feedback? So there was a question about like, uh, can you tell me about a, a freshman interested in tennis? So we have lots of variety of athletics. Uh, we have, it's a three season um, system at the high school level, um, depending on uh, the 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 gender of the student. So we have boys tennis in the fall, and then there is girls tennis in the spring. And so, um, and that's one thing to kind of note. Um, and Mr. Ryan can speak this too because he's our cross country coach. But uh, and maybe you want to speak to just kind of the idea of fall sports and and how parents can think about some of those fall sports. And yeah, def definitely, Mike. Thanks. And again, as as Sonia said. We'll find out a lot more information about what we're allowed to do. Um, but if, if I imagine if they're feeling comfortable, typically um, information will be sent out with coaches' contact information um, near the in the spring. And a lot of sports, not all, but a lot of sports will meet optionally during the summer, which is a great way to get to know people, especially if you're coming in from, you know, if you're new to the district or from you know one of the private schools, it's a great way to get to meet some fellow students before we're actually in the building. Most of, I believe most, if not all, the fall sports are now no cut sports. I might, it might not be true for volleyball, I'm not sure, but they're, it's just a fantastic opportunity, no matter what your level, to get introduced to school. I think our coaching staffs for all sports do a great job of being welcoming to students of all levels we know some are trying them for the first time some have done them their whole lives but it's really a great way to be involved can be a great incentive for students to stay focused on school so that they can you know be part of their sport um so highly recommend it the seasons are reversed from a, a little bit from our um our our district middle schools um football and cross country are in the fall boys and girls cross country um boys tennis boys football girls cross country, girls volleyball, girls swimming, and girls soccer are your, are your fall sports. So they'll get information about that kind of through Mr. Cushman. Um, he'll send that out so that you make sure that you know the dates. As soon as we know that information, we'll pass that along. Yeah, and he has a sheet posted on the CO Athletics page with the coach's contact information if you don't hear something and are looking to solicit information. Perfect. 
So um, one of the questions is around um, students who have um, exceptional needs. And I think that Monique Carpenter spoke to that a little bit, um, but meeting with our case managers and figuring out a support plan um, and entry is a great um, starting point. We have lots of different co-taught options as well as um, different services depending on the needs for those students. So I would recommend reaching out to Erin Ferda, who is not here this evening, or Monique Carpenter, and we can get you in touch with them. Um, but we really do have a wide range of services to support all students. So um, we, we recommend giving us a try and seeing what we can do to support all students. All right, we have another question about math. Um, and I think that those are kind of handled on a case by case basis. Um, that's meeting with Jeff and Angie, our math department chair who can continue to help um, with some of those things. So, all right. So if you have any additional questions, um, feel free to reach out to any of us. It's our first name dot last name at bellinghamschools.org. We're happy to answer those. Thank you for hanging with us for an hour and a half this evening. Um, that's a lot of information and we know that everyone's just doing the best they can. That's all we ask. Pick the classes that you can and we'll do the rest um, to kind of make sure that we can answer those questions and work individually with each student. So a huge thank you to Erica this evening for interpretation services, for all of our department chairs for coming, um, and a big thank you to all of our parents for coming tonight um, and learning more about all the things that we have to offer. We look forward to having you um, class of 2025. That's wild. Wow. Woo. So here we go. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Good night.